everybody! This video is going to be the vlog about how I took my Adams Family dollhouse out to the museum in Arizona. This video picks up right after I put the lights on my Adams Family mansion, so if you haven't seen that yet, I will put a link in the description in case you want to check it out first. I'm not usually a vlogger, so I wasn't very good about giving like face cam updates where I talked about what I was doing, so that's why I'm doing an afterwards narration, and I will just be popping in every now and then to fill in my video gaps. So now I'm gonna pass it off to past era. I literally just finished filming the lighting video where I did all the lighting on the exterior of the Adams house so it could be ready to go to the museum. And now I have to pack everything. So I have to have this in my car ready to go in less than two days. And the lighting project just took way longer than I thought. I thought this was going to be a very calm week of packing and taking my time and reminiscing about my project. But no, 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 that's not happening. <laughs> I thought lighting up the house was going to take me one or two days max. And this is day four when I finally finished it. That just goes to show you just never really know how long a miniature project is going to take and so just always give yourself extra time. I've been doing this for 12 years now and I still forget to do that. So this video is going to be more of a vlog of me packing up the house, going to Arizona, setting up the house at the museum. I'm also teaching a class while I'm there so that's another thing I have to do. I have to finish preparing for the class and making sure I have everything for that. So there's lots to do. I also have children that I'm having to make sure have everything they need while I'm gone and the people watching them have everything they need while I'm gone. And uh, so I need to get on it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is eat some food because like I said, I literally just finished this project. I'm starving, but uh, food and then and then I gotta pick up some because it is a mess in here from working on the lights. But I also have to take all of this mess with me in case something goes wrong with the lights once I get it there because electrical stuff, you know? So it's all these little bits and pieces that I have to remember to take stuff for the class. I have to remember to take stuff in case something breaks and I need to fix it. So I need to have tools, I need to have glue, I need to have paint. Um, so I have maybe like 10 lists running right now of everything I need to do. But first, food. I started the packing process by making sure I gathered up all of my lighting materials and getting them in a box that I knew was going on the trip with me. This included the lighting in case they needed to replace any of the lights, some of the pieces I used to make the exterior drains just in case I needed to add something or replace something. I wanted to make sure I had all my bases covered. As I mentioned, I had multiple lists going to make sure that I did not forget anything. And now I'm starting with my packing process list, which includes packing up all the small miniatures and then moving to the bigger and bigger pieces, which would mean ending with the house. Previously, anytime I needed to take the miniatures out of the house, I ended up putting them in these brown boxes and I never wrapped them up because I knew they weren't going anywhere. They were just sitting inside these boxes inside the cabinet and they weren't going to be jostled around. So this might look like chaos and like the miniatures aren't safe, but they are but they would not be safe going on the trip. So what I'm going to do is take these smaller miniatures and transfer them to one of these jewelry embroidery thread cases. And then I'm going to wrap up the larger pieces that are going to go into the box so that everything is safe and secure and nothing is going to be rattling against each other. I probably should have done it this way a long time ago, but I'm glad this is finally forcing me to properly store my miniatures when they aren't in the house. I ended up buying five of these jewelry cases for this process, but I only needed four, which I was kind of surprised at. There ended up being less of the smaller miniatures than I originally imagined, or they just fit into the cases better than I had realized. 
I also wanted to mention this chair. I hadn't shown it before. My friend Nancy made this for me and it's actually made like the original wicker chair would have been. When I first made Morticia's chair myself, I just kind of faked it by braiding some embroidery floss and wrapping it around a form. And so I'm so thankful. Thank you, Nancy, for making this for me. I'm still going to keep the original one I made. However, it's going to go on the front porch and the more accurate one is going to go into the living room. So now I'm just going to wrap everything in some tissue paper and carefully place it into the box, kind of like a puzzle, making sure that nothing is going to get squished. Things like the brass table, it's not really going to get hurt by anything else in the box, so I'm not worrying about wrapping that up in tissue paper. If there's any extra room on the top of the miniatures once I'm finished wrapping everything up, I'm going to put an extra layer of tissue paper just to make sure everything is set in place. And um, this one I really didn't have to. I just added the rug on top so that it would sit flat and I was done. For the smaller miniatures, I'm taking that same paper and just cutting up smaller squares. The goal here is to stuff each square with some of this paper just so that things aren't moving around. The tissue paper should hold it in place, keeping it safe during the trip. There are also a few pieces here that didn't need tissue paper like the pillows, so I just kind of used my best judgment. I use the same process for each and every room that I went through. All of my rooms have individual of those brown boxes and so it was easy to go piece by piece because the house was already emptied of the miniatures. Once I had everything packed up, I kind of did a little jiggle test or a shake test to make sure I didn't hear anything rattling and that let me know that everything was very well put in place. Then I made sure to label it, so once I get to the museum, I know exactly what box to pull when I'm working on a certain room. The box with the dolls in it was already lined with tissue paper on the bottom to protect them. Uh, I kind of waved goodbye to the family members there. And so all I did was pack more tissue paper on top, and this is going to kind of make the tissue the tissue paper kind of ends up being like spring loaded and it will hold everything in place as long as the lid is on the box so as you'll see the lid kind of pushes up and i know this is going to compress down on the dolls not too much to where they could possibly break but just so that they're held in place then i can use some tape to tape down the lid and know that they are also going to be safe and sound Originally, when I designed the Adams Family base, the cabinet that sits underneath the house, I wanted it to be the storage for the house if I ever moved it. However, since it's not coming with me to the museum, I had to invest in a couple tubs that I could pack everything into. I used my Tetris skills to get the brown boxes and the jewelry cases into the tubs and they ended up fitting pretty well. Then I was able to use some packing paper to kind of fill in the spaces so they also did not jiggle around once they were inside the car. I knew packing the lighting that I had just created for the Adams Family House was going to be interesting. So I picked the tub that had a flat area on top, laid down some tissue paper, and started putting the lighting on top of it. Most of it could come apart. There were a few pieces that were a little difficult to unhook, so I just had to be creative in how I placed them down. Then I added tissue paper on top, and I'm so annoyed <laughs> at the design of most bins because they kind of dip into your space on the interior. It like takes away an inch or two inches on the inside of your bin, so you can't pack it to the top. So I decided to put the lid upside down, and it had these pre-made holes on the sides, so I just zip tied the tub's lid on and it gave me an extra four, three or three to four inches for packing and they can still sit on top of each other even though it's not quite as secure because it doesn't sink down into the lid, but it ended up working for me. Now it was time to move on to the house itself. Thankfully, I never fully connected the house and it comes apart in pretty much three big chunks. There are some other individual pieces that come off, but it was really helpful that it wasn't one giant dollhouse. 
Wherever I could, I tried to pack some of the smaller pieces inside of the larger pieces, as long as it fit and I didn't feel like it was in danger of breaking anything on the interior. And then I just slowly worked on one piece at a time. To pack the larger pieces, I knew I wanted to stuff the inside of the rooms. The reason for this is I have some items that are permanently connected to the walls, such as the drapes, some of the picture hangings, and even Cousin Farouk that's inside the main large part of the house. So the paper is going to hold those against the wall and just kind of give them some strength when we're bumping down the road. To protect the sides of the house, this was a tip from Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. I used some cardboard to go along the edges just in case I end up bumping into something as I'm moving them around. I wanted to use very little plastic in this. Um, I needed to use some just to make sure that the paper stayed inside the house. This was going to be an easier way to do it rather than using tape. I did pack some of the larger miniatures inside, for example, this fountain. I used the code to myself that the tissue paper was wrapping up miniatures inside and the packing paper was just kind of stuffing. When I started taking stuff out, I knew that was kind of something to look for. If there was tissue paper, look for a miniature inside. For the widow's walk railing, I just used some cardboard cut to size and then I bent it around the railings and taped it in place. This helped protect it so that if I did bump up against the roof of the car, I wasn't going to bend any of the delicate pieces of the widow's walk. This was a pretty easy process and I definitely recommend. The last thing I had to do was pull up the landscaping, which usually sits kind of sunken into the top of my cabinet. I just painted the edges a brown because usually you can't see them, but in the museum you will be able to see them and I didn't want them to stick out. And then I just packed them into the final box. After packing up all of my miniatures, it was time to hold my breath, cross my fingers, and just hope that everything fit into my car. It's kind of hard to tell from this video, but I used more sheets of cardboard to go in between each individual piece of the dollhouse. I also put some pieces of cardboard underneath each base of the house to maybe give it a more spongy, bouncy ride as we're going down the road. Thankfully, everything fit really well and there was even room for our luggage. It's about 3.50 in the morning. 3.50 a.m. on Saturday and myself and the Adams and my husband are in the car and we're on our way to the museum. So when I'm a bit more awake, I'm not driving. When I'm a bit more awake, I will update y'all. Our goal was to get to the museum before 6 p.m. on Saturday so we could drop off the house and this is us finally pulling in. It was so exciting to get to this final part of the journey. Well, I guess it's the middle part of the journey. This is the Mini Time Machine Museum of Miniatures in Tucson, Arizona. We dropped off the house at this point, which I was really thankful they let us just come and drop it off because the hotel I booked, I did not realize it was a parking garage or valet situation. So there was not really going to be an easy way for me to take the Adams Family House from my car into the hotel for the night. And I wasn't about to leave it all just sitting in the car. So this was incredibly helpful. That night we just kind of crashed because it had been a 14 hour drive and I knew the next day I was going to be teaching a class at the museum. I didn't take any video of that because I didn't want anyone to feel uncomfortable, but I met so many wonderful people. Some people that were subscribers to my channel who found out about the class, and some other people who didn't watch my channel but followed the museum page and were interested in the class. I enjoyed getting to know all of them and I definitely followed their suggestion to get an EGs before we left. It was delicious and thank you for the suggestion.
And if you were one of the ones that was in my class, thank you so much for being there. It was so fun. I enjoyed getting to know you all, and I'm still hoping that you will send me some photos of your finished projects. So the class was on Sunday, and then I knew that Monday was going to be the day that I set everything up in the museum. Monday is the day that the museum is closed, and that is when they do maintenance or switch out exhibits. So that's why Monday was the day for setting up the dollhouse. I started by unpacking everything that I had just packed, of course, and carefully setting out the miniatures. It was so fun to just start this process, I guess. I was so excited at this point. And I, I know I'm not like jumping for joy here, but in my heart, I'm jumping for joy because this is just like so exciting. Even just to see my house in another setting was really exciting for me. And seeing all the pieces laid out, it really helped me realize how just how big this project ended up being over the years. There was a last minute change on where the house was going to be installed. So while they were working on getting the area ready, I was able to walk around a little bit and check out the museum. I didn't get a chance to take video of too much, but I will leave a link for the museum website if you want to check it out and see what exhibits they have. One of my favorite parts was the history area. It had so many antique dollhouses and it was so interesting to see how the dollhouse profession or the dollhouse art form had transitioned from many, many years ago, hundreds of years ago into what it is today. Then it was time to set up the house. The display that the house ended up going into was really cool. The entire case kind of slid out from the wall to reveal a table that was out in the open. So it was fairly easy to set everything up because I could access it from the front and the back. And this was like the kind of crowning moment I thought where I was finally putting the tower on top. The house is now all in one piece. And as you can see, the lawn just kind of sits out in front of it. Then it was the monumental task of putting in all the individual miniatures. It was at this point I was so thankful that the museum told me to add lights because it was very dark setting up these items inside and I ended up using a flashlight to light up each room as I worked. I didn't want to put the lights on until the very last because I didn't want to keep bumping into them and just kind of knocking things around. A few of you in the last video asked about the outside of the house, if I was going to light it, but I did find the lighting in that room to be sufficient enough so that you could see the outside. And I really liked that it was enough of a difference that when the lights are on on the inside of the house, it kind of makes it light up the windows on the outside of the house. So that ended up being cool to see. Here you can see my process of using the flashlight. Um, I did have one piece I ended up having to glue together. I already knew that it was in pieces, but I just kind of quickly glued it while I was setting everything up. And this was when I finally got the lights on and I was able to place the Adams family inside of their house. Now that I have all the miniatures inside with the lighting, I really love that I put the lights at the floor level because I think that up lighting just helps with that spookiness. And also I thought that the skull in the fairy tree in the fairy tale area was perfect because it was facing straight towards the Adams family house. Here you can see how the interior lights work and how they look from the outside. And I'm just loving seeing this all set up. 
I ended up having to leave the museum before the exhibit was closed and before any of the signs were attached. So I was very thankful for the museum staff to send me a photo of the finished exhibit, which I will put in here so you can see what it looks like. They also printed these really cool brochures, which I didn't even know they were planning on doing. It has the Adams Family House on the front, and then I was shocked as a full page picture of me on the inside with a description of the project. And then on the back, you can see part of the Adams Family House clock sitting on the table that's in the long dark hallway. The museum staff was so kind and so helpful throughout this entire process, even from the beginning of trying to figure out the contract and the times and getting that all worked out. They were so patient with me, like explaining the entire process, and I really, really appreciated that. I'm pretty sure I was not able to see everything the museum had on display while I was there. I ended up getting lost actually because it's a lot bigger than it seems. So I'm hoping when I go back to pick the house up, I have time to go through the museum a little bit more meticulously. And I also participated in the voice tour. So if you are able to go to the museum and you get the voice tour that tells you about different projects that are around the museum, you will hear my voice. After everything was set up and I was happy with how the house was looking, it was time for myself and my husband to drive back towards Texas. I always think it's so funny in vlogs whenever there's like driving footage put in because it always has this beautiful music in the background when in actuality it sounds like this. It's so loud. <laughs> I decided to bring all the packaging that I put the house into back home and that way I can store it and make sure I keep everything down to the paper and the individual cardboard pieces that I had used to protect the house. I'm just going to keep all of those so that I know I have exactly everything I need when I go back to pick it up. So for now that is the end of the Adams journey. I guess it's not really the end, it's more of a pause. The house is going to be there for about a year. It ended up being 13 months because they wanted to keep it for this Halloween season and through next October Halloween season. I really enjoyed this journey. It was kind of surreal the entire time and it still feels weird. It feels like something is very much missing in my studio. There's just so much more room for activities. It does mean that I have a larger workbench here and I have a little bit more room to work on the Beetlejuice house, which is of course my current project. I want to make sure and say thank you to all of you who have followed along with the Adams Family journey. I know for a fact that it has been the channel or posting videos of this project on the channel that has been so encouraging and has kept me going. Um, I'm not sure if I was sharing this with anyone if I would actually be anywhere close to done with this project. It's the fact that you loved the project as much as I did that kept me encouraged and kept me excited about it. I also want to say a huge thank you to my patrons because that extra income from Patreon definitely with the gas money and the hotel and the snacks and all of that as I was going out to Arizona. So thank you so much for your extra support. So that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful Halloween month. I think that's it for Adam's October. I didn't realize we'd have some more Adam's October videos, but I'm very glad that it ended up happening in this month. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. All by myself Don't wanna be all by myself anymore. <laughs> Kimmy! Kimmy! Hello! Are you worried? I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine.